Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, Figma has launched an incredible new update. We're gonna check it out. We're also gonna check out some smaller updates that come along with this update or right before this update. So without further ado, let's just get started with the video. All right, so the first major update is called multi-edit. And from the name itself, you get a bit of clue. Multi-edit is basically editing the same element on different screens at the same time without even making it a component. Anytime you copy, say, a uh, element, it already has the multi-edit feature activated on it. Let me show you quickly in Figma how this can be done. By the way, the Delhi Designathon, only a few weeks to go, the link is in my description. All right, so here, if I have a little screen here and I have another screen here, the first screen has a piece of text, maybe let's say filter. Now I have three layers right here, filter, filter, and filter, okay? Now, if I rotate any one of these, the middle one, left one, right one, if I rotate these, each one is individually rotating. Earlier, it would rotate as a group, 360, which would be very weird. Now it rotates individually. It scales up individually, just as I'm doing. So each element has its individual properties, maintains it, and still becomes larger, smaller, whatever it is. This works perfectly with positioning as well. So if I move filter from the top left to the right, it will move each one of these to the right. It won't move it out of bounds for anything else. It will work perfectly and smoothly. Now imagine there are elements on the screen, multiple elements on the screen, and you want to multi-select this. It's possible. If I just click on this filter, hold shift, drag out like this, see, only these text boxes or these text areas are selected. The rectangles are not selected. I think that is a fantastic thing as well. Multi-select comes with multi-edit. And what is fascinating for me is because they are a copy of each other, even if I change the name here or the layer name here, it will still be selected the same way. It will still be treated the same way. So changing the layer name or anything like that won't affect any one of these, as long as it comes from the same parent element, which is the first element. Now this function also works very well with components and its variants. You can place icons in both of these and it will work simultaneously, just like we did in non-component elements as well. If you have elements in your assets panel, I don't have any here, but if you do, you can also multi-add at the same time and then edit it at once. Another cool thing I was playing with around with the playground, I'll give a link in the description, if I hold shift, it will automatically highlight the ones that there are similar to this element. I think these are some nice little touches that will help you in your daily design. This works very similar in text as well. As you can see, I've selected all of these and if I press enter, I edit it anywhere and it will all edit together, which is pretty cool. Changing positions will also be simpler. If I have multiple elements in an auto layout, I can select one of them and just with my arrow keys move them around like this and it will move around in all of these elements. Everything else is given in this playground file on Figma. I'll have a link in the description. You can always get this for free and try it out for yourself. Let's move on to the next update, which is device frames inside prototype. So earlier you had to click on play and only then you'll have an iPhone or an Android phone around your prototype. Now it comes on the page here when you're previewing it. And then I go to prototypes and click on show prototype settings. I can now select any device that I want. So so iPhone 14 for this case. So when I preview this, instead of playing it, it will display in this nice little iPhone mock-up here. Instead of the old stagnant pop-up page, this is now an iPhone. It looks much more realistic and it feels as if I'm using this on Android Studio or something. Any changes that you make to your prototype settings here will also show up in that preview section, which I think is a very nice update. Okay, so the next update comes with gradients. So if we move on here and we add a gradient to this page. Let me make this gradient a little more evident like red and blue. Wow, how original. <laughs> there is now a little icon here which says flip grid. So any point of time I wanna flip the gradient, I can just flip the gradient like this. No matter how many elements I might have, no matter how many colors I have, it will just do a complete one-on-one -on -one flip, which I think is so useful. You don't have to drag around like we did earlier. Now, this works with everything. Radial gradient, like this, so inside to outside. Angular gradient, like this, so rotates kind of a 180, and then diamond as well. So they've not left anyone out. All these tiles have the flip gradient button, which is 
so useful, so nice. The next thing that caught my eye was allow zeros. So now you can have width or height values of zeros instead of 0 0.1 that we had to keep earlier. So if I have an element here like this, I can give the height as zero and it will show up as zero. Earlier it was 0 0.1, I guess that was something like that. But now we don't have to do any of that. Prototyping is gonna be much cleaner, much better because of these zero values that have appeared. I'll share the link to the page where there are even more smaller updates that you can check out. Maybe some of them are useful to you. Do you think multi-edit is as useful as it seems? Will it help you out? Let me know in the comments. Let the world know in the comments and I'll see you every week just like this. Until next time, take care. God bless.